Agnosticism is the view that the truth values of certain claims, especially metaphysical and religious claims such as whether God, the divine or the supernatural exist, are unknown and perhaps unknowable. According to the philosopher William L. Rowe, in the popular sense of the term, an agnostic is someone who neither believes nor disbelieves in God, whereas an atheist disbelieves in God. Agnosticism is a doctrinal set of tenets rather than a religion as such. Thomas Henry Huxley, an English biologist, coined the word agnostic in 1869. Earlier thinkers, however, had written works that promoted agnostic points of view, such as Sanjaya Belathaputta, a 5th century BCE Indian philosopher who expressed agnosticism about any afterlife, and Protagoras a 5th century BCE Greek philosopher who expressed agnosticism about the gods. The Nasadi Yusukta in the Rig Veda is agnostic about the origin of the universe. Defining agnosticism. Agnosticism is of the essence of science, whether ancient or modern. It simply means that a man shall not say he knows or believes that which he has no scientific grounds for professing to know or believe. Consequently agnosticism puts aside not only the greater part of popular theology, but also the greater part of anti-theology. On the whole, the Bosch of heterodoxy is more offensive to me than that of orthodoxy, because heterodoxy professes to be guided by reason and science, and orthodoxy does not. Thomas Henry Huxley that which agnostics deny and repudiate as immoral is the contrary doctrine that there are propositions which men ought to believe, without logically satisfactory evidence, and that reprobation ought to attach to the profession of disbelief in such inadequately supported propositions. Thomas Henry Huxley agnosticism, in fact, is not a creed, but a method, the essence of which lies in the rigorous application of a single principle. Positively, the principle may be expressed. In matters of the intellect follow your reason as far as it will take you, without regard to any other consideration, and negatively, in matters of the intellect do not pretend that conclusions are certain which are not demonstrated or demonstrable. Thomas Henry Huxley being a scientist, above all else, Huxley presented agnosticism as a form of demarcation. A hypothesis with no supporting objective, testable, evidence is not an objective, scientific, claim. As such, there would be no way to test said hypotheses, leaving the results inconclusive. His agnosticism was not compatible with forming a belief as to the truth or falsehood of the claim at hand. Karl Popper would also describe himself as an agnostic, according to philosopher William L. Rowe, in this strict sense. Agnosticism is the view that human reason is incapable of providing sufficient rational grounds to justify either the belief that God exists or the belief that God does not exist. Others have redefined this concept, making it compatible with forming a belief, and only incompatible with absolute certainty. George H. Smith, while admitting that the narrow definition of atheist was the common usage definition of that word, and admitting that the broad definition of agnostic was the common usage definition of that word, promoted broadening the definition of atheist and narrowing the definition of agnostic. Smith rejects agnosticism as a third alternative to theism and atheism and promotes terms such as agnostic atheism and agnostic theism. Smith's terminology hadn't caught on by the time Antony Flew came along, also promoting a broader definition of atheism, and also bringing into question the definition of agnosticism. In this interpretation, an atheist becomes not someone who positively asserts the non-existence of God, but someone who is simply not a theist. Let us, for future ready reference, introduce the labels positive atheist for the former and negative atheist for the latter. The introduction of this new interpretation of the word atheism may appear to be a piece of perverse Humpty Dumptyism going arbitrarily against established common usage. Why ever, it could be asked, don't you make it not the presumption of atheism but the presumption of agnosticism? Anthony Flew most recently, 
The terms apathetic and pragmatic agnosticism have been coined with regard to the view that there is no proof of either the existence or non-existence of any deity. But since any deity that may exist appears unconcerned for the universe or the welfare of its inhabitants, the question is largely academic and that their existence therefore has little to no impact on personal human affairs and should be of little theological interest. Etymology agnostic, meaning without, and gamma nu sigma iota sigma, meaning knowledge, was used by Thomas Henry Huxley in a speech at a meeting of the Metaphysical Society in 1869 to describe his philosophy, which rejects all claims of spiritual or mystical knowledge. Early Christian church leaders used the Greek word gnosis to describe spiritual knowledge. Agnosticism is not to be confused with religious views opposing the ancient religious movement of Gnosticism in particular. Huxley used the term in a broader, more abstract sense. Huxley identified agnosticism not as a creed but rather as a method of skeptical, evidence-based inquiry. In recent years, scientific literature dealing with neuroscience and psychology has used the word to mean not knowable. In technical and marketing literature, agnostic can also mean independence from some parameters, for example, platform agnostic or hardware agnostic. Qualifying agnosticism Scottish Enlightenment philosopher David Hume contended that meaningful statements about the universe are always qualified by some degree of doubt. He asserted that the fallibility of human beings means that they cannot obtain absolute certainty except in trivial cases where a statement is true. By definition, types agnosticism has sometimes been divided into two categories in academic and philosophical treatment. Strong agnosticism the view that the question of the existence or non-existence of a deity or deities and the nature of ultimate reality is unknowable by reason of our natural inability to verify any experience with anything but another subjective experience. A strong agnostic would say, I cannot know whether a deity exists or not, and neither can you. Weak agnosticism The view that the existence or non-existence of any deities is currently unknown but is not necessarily unknowable. Therefore, one will withhold judgment until evidence, if any, becomes available. A weak agnostic would say, I don't know whether any deities exist or not, but maybe one day, if there is evidence we can find something out. Agnosticism is sometimes used colloquially to refer to plurality of beliefs.